In this video, we're going to look at an example problem to put some of the math skills we've been learning to the test. So this problem says consider a function for volume V that depends on pressure and temperature. The total differential of this function can be expressed as the following, right? So we looked at this form of the total differential, right? So since it's a function of pressure and temperature, you have to take the partial derivative with respect to each of those variables and sum up their respective contributions to the total differential. It wants us to show that this expression is true. Now, if you've never solved a problem like this, um, these are basically what we call mathematical proofs. What you want to do is show that the left-hand side, explicitly show that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And if you're doing a proof, it has to be general. So in order to solve this, we're not going to assume that we're dealing with an ideal gas. Um, even though you could show it in that way, we want to actually prove uh, that, this, that this is true. So we're only going to work with this total differential expression. So the point of this problem is that we need an explicit expression for this guy and this guy. right? And be able to show that if we invert the one that we get for this partial derivative, that those would be equal thus proving the inverter in this general case, right? So we're going to make use of two uh, derivatives that we know would be equal to zero. So if we differentiate dv dp at constant volume, we know that's going to be equal to zero, right? Because we're looking for a change in volume at constant volume. So that's going to be equal to zero. And also if we do dv dt at constant volume, that's going to also be equal to zero. Now, why would I want to use these two derivatives? Well, then that means that we can actually get these expressions that we need, right? So if I take the partial with respect to temperature at constant volume, that's going to give me the dp dt term that I need. And if I differentiate with respect to pressure, um, at constant volume. That's going to give me the dt dp term that I need. And then I can use both of those um, in order to see if they're going to be equal. I can get an expression for both of those and see if they're going to be equal. Okay, so I'm going to start on a new slide here to give me some more room. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is obtain uh, dp dt. Right, so the steps I'm going to do here are going to be to obtain dp dt at constant volume, right? So what I want to do is use this derivative, dv dt at constant volume, right? So if going off of that total derivative, right, that first partial is just going to come down. So we got dv dp at constant t. And then we're going to take the differential of pressure with respect to temperature at constant volume, right? Then uh, that's going to be plus, right? That other partial derivative just comes down. So we got dv dt at constant pressure. And then we'll have dt dt at constant volume. And we know that this is going to equal zero, right? Now this dt dt term, right? That guy is just going to be one. Right, so now we're left with um, these two partial derivatives and just this one. Right? So uh, what we can do here is try to isolate dp dt. Keep in mind what our original goal is. Right? So what we're trying to do is to isolate this term so that we can show that it's equal to the inversion of this uh, partial derivative. Right? So keep that goal in mind. Okay, so uh, what we can do is uh, move the other, the second term over to the right hand side of the equal sign. So we got dp dt constant volume, right? So we're going to move that guy over. And so that's going to just be negative dv dt constant p, right? So basically subtracting by this guy on both sides. And now we can just divide this other partial derivative, right? So we'll end up with dp dt at constant volume. And then we should have negative dv dt 
constant P over dV dP at constant T, right? So this gives us an expression for dP dT at constant V, right? So this is what we're going to have to compare to the other term that we get um, in order to see if the inverter is actually true in this case, right? So um, now we want to actually obtain the other term. So let me start a new slide here. So uh, we want to obtain, so it's going to be to obtain the following derivative, right? We need dt dp at constant volume, right? So again, keep in mind, right? We're, this is what we're trying to get. So we already got a term for this guy. Now we just need to get an explicit term for this guy and see if they're equal. So going back here, right? So we want to obtain this guy. So the derivative that we'll need to take here is going to be dv dp at constant volume, right? So again, starting from the uh, total derivative, right? We'll have dv uh, dp at constant t, and we'll have dp dp at constant volume plus dv dt at constant pressure and then dt dp at constant volume and we know again this whole thing is going to be equal to zero since we're differentiating volume at constant volume again we have this term that goes to one right so we got one of these terms that cancels out so um, again I'm going to move this one term over here to the uh, right hand side right so we're going to be left with dv dt at constant p times dt dp constant v it's going to be equal to negative dv dp at constant t and then we want to isolate this guy right so we got dt dp at constant v Right, it's going to be equal to negative dv dp at constant t over dv dt at constant p. Now, we're really after the inverse of this guy, right? So let's go ahead and invert it and then compare it to what we got previously. Right, so we're after the inverse of this guy. So all we have to do is just flip this. So what's on the denominator now goes up to the numerator. It's still negative, right? So then we'll have dv dt at constant p over dv dp at constant t. All right, so that's the expression that we're looking for, right? So, um, so we got the inverse of this guy. So now we want to compare this to what we got on the previous slide, right? And see if it checks out. And it does, right? dv dt at constant p over dv dp at constant t, right? We get the exact same thing here, right? So the inverse of dt dp is going to be equal to uh, dp dt at constant volume. And that's exactly what we were originally set out to show. So we did show that left hand side equals right hand side. So we have solved the problem. And so that's how you put all of this stuff to use. So we use some of the total differential there um, and we kind of use this inverter property and some of the algebra tricks we use to even um, derive those partial derivative gymnastics tools in order to solve this guy.